fixing a Logie or Logitech MX Master 2S for the third time. Oh my giddy arm. Well, we're going to give it another go. Now, I've mended this twice already and it works for a bit and then it fails again. Now, the problem uh, that we get with this mouse is that when you move it about, the actual cursor doesn't move. Hmm. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it's like a bit jittery. Well, it's a common fault with this particular mouse. I hope they fix it on the MX Master 3, but you know what these companies are like. While they're still buying the flipping things, they might not make any alterations to them. Well, this actual mouse has got a few faults. Now, although I do like the mouse, its usability is brilliant. I bought it because it's the one recommended to me. And it was an offer. Well, at the moment, you can buy this mouse for about 65 euros on Amazon FR, but obviously in the United States as well, it'd, be, it'd probably be cheaper than that. And oh, it's not a bad price for what it can do. Now, like I say, I've had it for two, two, maybe three years, and I used it quite a lot, as you can tell by the state of it. And I do clean it. <laughs> it doesn't look like it, I know. But this particular wheel here, where it's all nasty and yucky there, um, well... That rubber bit there, it all breaks down and it goes all mouldy. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? So you scrub it the best you can, you can get, you know, and bits fall off it. You know? uh, same happens on the side here. This one's not so bad, actually, on the side here. That's a bit easier to clean. But also all this rubbery type white stuff all goes manky. Um, I don't know if you can actually see it in the picture, that in the video that well. But it is actually really, it looks just horrible. Horrible, 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 horrible. These things are a bit of a bacterial fest anyway, aren't they, to be honest. Now, the problem with this mouse regarding the cursor not moving around your screen is all down, well, frozen cursor, I suppose you could call it, down to that. There's a button underneath there, a micro switch. What happens is this all collapses, and this has collapsed. I don't know if you can see it's recess in there now. You can see the shade, shade in there. Well, that's because that all there's collapsed, because you're constantly got your thumb on it, like so. And you push down with that button, if you use that, if you use that button. So, yeah, that, that brings up your multi screens or whatever you've got set to. Now, I've already taken off the old sliders off the bottom, which I've done several times before, and usually they go back okay. So there's six screws in the bottom here. There's four uh, Phillips screws, and uh, uh, probably zeros, I think. And then there's two little uh, Allen screws as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove those. So I'm not um, editing this video, so um, don't expect it to be fast forward. I want to show you real. So I might not even be able to fix it. I might have to take it to the workshop to do or something like that. But, you know, at least I'll be able to show you where the fault lies. And I, you know, when you, normally when you press on, you can hear the click, click. There's no click there now. The click's gone. Clickless. I'll take these two little hand screws over here. Obviously, a good idea is to have a magnet nearby, which I haven't got. I wish I did. Oh, actually, no, I tell you. <laughs> i got one up there. That'll do. One of them will do. Oh, they can post the notes and stick them onto a magnet so you don't lose them. So you tie them because they're black and end up in your carpet. You, you, you know, the likelihood you've lost them for good. Or in the nooks and crannies somewhere. I know I could put it to the handle of the screwdriver. Yeah. There you go. So I want to stick onto the magnet. So I've got two screws on there and I've got these four here. Oh, should I turn it off? That's a good idea. <laughs> Mad just on. I could play silly buggers with my screen. Da -da -do 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 -do. Right there. There. Right. Okay, so all the screws are out now. And they're all attached to the magnet. Put the magnet over there out the way. Put that over the way. Put that over there. Alright, so now. I've taken all the screws out. I don't think there's one behind there or there. I'm pretty certain there isn't. I should be able to separate the base, which incorporates all that part inside here as well, from the top, with a bit of luck. Yeah, there you go. You can see that separating the part there. How easy was that? A bit wary, because there's a little. If I remember rightly, there's a little um connector in there, or or a ribbon. There's there's a ribbon just there. Okay. You can see that little ribbon there. Now that should just pull, you should be able to pull that out of there. But be gentle, obviously. Be gentle with it. 
you don't want to put any kinks in it. No, I'm not a repair man. As you probably tell. I was just trying to make, you know, save some pennies and I don't have to buy another one. So I do what I can myself. I should have a small knife here, really, just so I can get down the edge there and pop that off. Oh, there. There you go. That's off. Right, so that little thing there. If you can see it there. That there. I should focus on there you go that goes up uh, basically f goes up and down that traps the ribbon so you can see it on there there you go there you go and that trap traps the ribbon that does oh go that way yeah all right so now you separate it oh typical battery I've got quite a common battery in there all right so this is the fit the wheel that gets really grubby you try and clean it and it just falls to pieces, all the bits of rubber come out. It's, it's like the, uh, it's reacting with the acid of your fingers. But anyway, the problem's not with this bit. The problem is with this bit. The behind here is a micro switch. Just behind this one here is a micro switch. So what we've got to do now is we've got to remove these two screws. Remember rightly now. It's been a while since I've done it last, but I'll just do that. Oh, basically it's been pressed down all the time now. The micro switch might be buggered. Now I, I could replace the micro switch. I can, well, it's clicking. The micro switch is clicking. So um, is it working? Who knows? But there, the microphone you might be hear it. Yes, it's definitely clicking. So it might not be the mug switch is the problem, but it's this is the problem, this thing here. That bit there. This area here collapses, so there's no support on that there, in this piece, and it collapses and pushes, basically pushes the mug switch down, so it's in the down position all the time. Now, if I push this back a few times, I know what I did last time. I actually removed a bit. There was a little nodule on there originally. And I melted it off to make more room. I don't know if you can see that on there. There's a little bit of plastic here. Just there. It's what pushes the actual micro switch down. Just a little bit there. So um, all I did is I, I got... I think I got my soul knot and actually just melted, a bit, melted it back. So um, it wasn't so deep. So what's happening is that's collapsed here. So that's pushed down too far. So it's constantly pushing that, that that switch down, and then it just freezes the uh, the actual um, uh, cursor. No, I don't actually use that switch. I have to make my mind up: do I want to keep that switch in place, or do I that, or do I bypass it? See, that's another option. I could bypass it, so it's like always off. You know, or, um, or, or take the wires off. I don't know which way, if it's got to be make or break, I don't know. I'd have to find out um, by putting the meter on it. Which we actually, do I have one here? Ooh. No, I don't have one here. If I did, I'd do it. I'd test it for you, but um, you've got, but basically, it's whether or not it makes or breaks, it'll depend on what you do with the wires, whether you an uh, uh, open connection, because there's only two wires there, an open connection, or do you have a closed connection? on that it depends it depends on the micro switch it was it's most likely to be uh down as, as making a connection now some people what they've done is actually release the screws here a little bit the ones that hold into place um some other people online i just removed the little nodule off that off the hair i might do it a bit more in very ginger Terrible design, it really is. 
it's obvious that was going to collapse in time. You know, if you look at the shape of it now on the edge, you see that got a curve in there. That curve that shouldn't be there. That's where it's collapsed over where the button area is. So, um, the ideal thing would be so I could reshape it or have a stiffener in there or something. See what's happened. The actual rubber itself has gone brittle. But I'm, I've been playing about it. And there's a cracked rub, rubber there. It's gone brittle. Oh dear. All right. Well, I'm gonna put that back again. I'm gonna. If I put that on there, where it should be, like that, right? And then if I squeeze that, I should hear it click. Is now. Hear that? Clicking there, wasn't clicking before while it was in place. Now it's clicking. So I've took the pressure off basically. Um, but I wouldn't say it's a permanent repair. It's such a bad design. You see, these are mostly expensive. You don't want to constantly be replacing them, do you? Not if they work, or <laughs> yeah, if they work. It's not working. So what could you do? I suppose. I suppose you could put stuff in the cross here to stiffen it up so when you put your finger on there that sort of spreads the load a bit instead of in straight on that it, straight on that one little point and pushing in that one point so you could do something like that I suppose a bit of rubber on there or something just to spread the load but it needs some support from behind doesn't it that's what it needs it's going to happen again it's definitely going to happen again Anyway, that's, um, I'm going to put that back on there. Now, sometimes people put these screws on there, but don't put them on tight. So they're a bit looser. That's one of them, isn't it? Don't want to see the head. All right, now you might see a pair of glasses on there. There's orange pair. Or should we be wearing them? But they're just ready specs, but they're three and a half times ones. So they're quite strong. I suppose I can see better now. Yeah, that's right screw. So you could... Mm, I suppose what I could do... You could put something behind the screws if you wanted to. Or even use a bit of Loctite, Loctite, Loctite and keep them loose. I don't want to do that at the moment. That might be for later. Let's see what happens. Alright, so we can put that back on there. Hopefully I can demonstrate it working as well. With a bit of luck if it works. If not, I'll have to take it apart again. Until I get it right. So it just, you know, it shows you how to do... Yeah, basically done in this video, I've shown you how to dismantle it. Showing you what causes the problem. Um, you might have to be ingenuitive. Maybe you've, you've had some experience with this and, you know, done it a little bit different. So that's clicking. Whereas it wasn't clicking before, that seized in the downward position. Right, so that's there. Loosen that a little bit. Okay. Alright, that's that. Now, basically, I reassemble that. Remember this little ribbon on the side here? It has to go into there. So we have to open that up on the side here, so it's open. We then slide that in, that ribbon into there without bending it it's not that easy it's a bit fiddly and then pop that little that little bit oh it's got down again stay <laughs> open like so let me slide that under Bit of things and thumbs here. I had carpal tunnel surgery, so I'm not that bad for it. Uh, dexterous, my fingers. Dexterous. That's better. So make sure it's lined up so that, that line there straight. And it, well, you know, you've got all your connections. There's a little line on there, if you can see that. Little. Oh, I just pulled on it. Yeah, 
passing. There's a little line on there, a little blue line on the ribbon that needs to be parallel with the actual clip. So I'm going to put that back over there. Hopefully we can slide that all back together. There's a little little lip on there, a little tongue. Let's go into that hole there first. And then the rest should, for all purposes, just drop back into place. So, yeah. Okay, that's all there. Let's double check, make sure. Yep, it's clicking. Well, if it's clicking, the likelihood is it's going to be okay. So we're going to put a couple of screws back in. Before we put all the other bits and pieces back in, I'll sort of prove that it is, the, yeah, that it's working. I can do that by popping a screen up on this software that I'm using to do the recording. And it'll be a page, like a web page or something. And I can show you the most working. I haven't prepared it, so. Well, I'm going to put more screws in just in a moment. Let me just find a web page. La 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 la. Oh, just a Google will do. Right, let's bring up the. Oh, change my glasses because I can't see anything at a distance with these. <laughs> oh, that's better. Right, um. So what I'm now doing, I'm just going to bring up a page just so I can show you it working. And hopefully it does. If not, I'll have to take it apart and have another look. Okay, so if I go on to... Let's bring that down now. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the page in. All right, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this on. So it should connect to the computer oh it's working i can see it you can't but i can so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna show you it working so it should be that one there there you go there's the computer ah, as in a uh, google document and can you see the mouse working there it is it's working yeah it's all there yeah and i'm not gonna press the left button because i'll minimize the software that i'm using at the same time but you can see that's that was the fault that was the fault. So, um, as you said, it's all working perfectly fine now. All down to that silly little micro switch. So, I hope you find that of use. It's quite a simple repair. A bit ginger with me because you know I've, I've had this apart so many times now. Um, let's just turn it off again. Now I know it works. And then we'll put the screws, all the screws back in, shall we? So, um, yeah, it's a bit bit ginger with me because they are a bit. I'd put it a bit tender. Yeah, then they're, they're not. Uh, as, as you can see on on, on this mouse here, the uh, the rubber's all gone a bit shitty. I don't know if you can get new rubbers for it or anything like that, or get a repair kit for them. You know, but it's probably going to cost almost as much as another mouse. Most of them, these sort of companies, you know, they to get a third party refurbishment kit for them if it's possible. I haven't even looked, so you might not, you might not be able to. You know, when you make this sort of investment, you see that when these mice were. They were 120 euros when, when they were in there, and I paid that, but that was on offer, so I bought it. I wouldn't have bought it otherwise. Um, I use trackball quite a bit, to be fair. But this mouse, I have to admit, is very, very smooth, very nice to use, and it's kind of nice. It's quite handy if you can persevere with it in the sense of it's got a few horrible little problems, such as this. It's a really bad design, as far as that's concerned, but the rest of it is brilliant, you know. You can you can then connect it to three different computers as well, all off the same uh, dongle, a little USB dongle. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to now um just stick the little stickers back on, and that's it then. I'd say stickers, these things. Yeah, but as you can probably tell, they've been off so many times. You can buy these if you if you damage them, because they can be tricky to get off. Now, I know it's going to look a bit shitty when I first put them on, but you'll be surprised. It doesn't take long before they settle back down into place. But it's, um, yeah, see them at the moment a bit, you know, I keep trying to come up. But that'll sort itself out. You did last time, I mean, anyway. Did last time, sorry. I'm, I'm not already using my voice here. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Is that right, right? A bit longer. 
Yeah, that'll do. So, as long as it's on that way, you're at... Yeah, that's, that's better. So, let's turn it on again and just double check it. Now I've done all the screws, that it's all working again. So, there's the window. There's the mouse. And it's all working. See? There you go. And there you are. So, I can... Yeah. Brilliant. Excellent. We're back in business again. So, there you go. That's what you got to do if you get a frozen cursor on your Logie to master 2s i don't know if they've corrected the fault in the uh, master 3 s i don't know was it s 3s whatever it is anyway it's a master 3 um i can't tell you i, I ain't got one so i can't i don't really know but i hope so because it's a common fault you know i've seen so many reports on this online and what have you of this happening where it collapses on this side which is a terrible design terrible design anyway if you have had problems with your Logie mouse, I would like to know. Leave in the comments down below. So ta-ta. And please boop the old like button. Because it does help the channel, you know. That it does. And you know, if you subscribe to the channel and press that old uh, little bell icon, you'll get notified. Yeah, you'll get a warm fuzzy feeling in your pocket every time I upload another video. Okay. Ta-ta.